Hello, friend humans. Lucas Levy Keppel here. And uh, it's a beautiful day today, but I have a little bit of a not so beautiful story to share with you. You might notice I'm out here in a parking lot in front of Lowe's, and uh, that's because part of my story takes place here. But not to bury the lead too far, a few weeks ago, my bicycle, the uh, giant Rome 4 that I have loved so much that I took on the Katy Trail, uh, that was such a great uh, bike for me. Unfortunately, that bike was stolen. And it was stolen when I decided to do something fairly um, insignificant and yet turned out to be not the brightest decision ever. I uh, walked into Lowe's to pick up something to clean the bike. Uh, I still had some dust from the Katy Trail on it. Uh, no matter what I had done, uh, it wasn't coming off. So I thought getting one of those little washer things would work really well. So I left the bike out front of the Lowe's here and uh, walked inside to get the washer that I had found online. Figured I was only gonna be in for a few minutes, wasn't going to be the end of the world. Well, it turns out that when I came out, the bicycle was gone. I had left it uh, leaning against a little uh, ledge, uh, knowing that I would be able to return and get it, no problems whatsoever. However, I made one critical mistake, and that was that I did not lock the bicycle. I've been on this street on 71st here so, so many times, uh, it didn't occur to me that I would need to lock it because, you know, this is a, a decent area. There's not a lot of people that uh, would take a bicycle and clearly it didn't belong to them. Well, uh, unfortunately, all of that turned out to be something uh, of a lie, something of a false confidence. So I looked around and the, the bike was gone. So I, I went up to the employee that was washing the windows outside and she was up on a little step ladder, took a step down. I said, Hey, have you seen uh, a bicycle around here? Uh, it might have fallen over or somebody took it inside. And she said, oh, oh, I know what happened. That was your bicycle. I just saw, and I'm not going to give the person's name. Let's call him Thomas for the sake of things here. Riding away on it. I just saw Thomas riding into the woods. Um, let's go and uh, check the security cameras just to be sure. But I I'm pretty sure that's what happened. So we went back to the loss prevention area. They pulled up the security cameras and sure enough, there was this individual who was identified by multiple people in the store as this person, uh, a person experiencing homelessness in the region uh, who picked up the bicycle and rode off on it into the woods behind the store. At that point I thought, oh, well, maybe if we can get the police out here, we can be able to get the situation solved. So I called the police and they told me that I had to submit my uh, theft report over the internet. They wouldn't respond to a phone call. I've never run into a situation like this. Who only accepts a report over uh, uh, the internet at this point? Now, I'm a millennial. I love to use the internet, but this was the kind of thing where I really wanted to talk to somebody and say, hey, um, you realize that there's a person that's been identified taking this. Uh, we have the security camera footage and I'm still here at the store. Do you think you could send somebody out to maybe go and check the area behind the store? But alas, it was not to be. So I had to wait for a little bit for my parents to come pick me up. <laughs> Sitting there with the uh, box that uh, held the washer that I had bought in the store. I could not use to wash the bicycle because the bicycle was stolen. In any case, I came back a couple days later to see if I could get a copy of the security footage and they told me that they could only give the security footage to the police. So they sent somebody out. And the person that came out retrieved the footage and said, oh yeah, this is the person, the same person, Thomas, that had been identified by everybody in the story so far. Uh, and she said, as it happens, the day your bicycle was stolen, I arrested Thomas that morning. That morning, he'd been let out and was walking back to where he was. And she said, you know what? I know exactly where in the woods his camp is. I'll go check and see if your bike is there. You head on home, I'll give you a call uh, when I recover it. I was ecstatic. I thought, okay, this is great. This is a person who knows where the bicycle is, uh, who knows who the person is that stole it, and maybe we can get it back. What a wonderful outcome to this story. However, as you're probably noticing, I don't have a bike with me. Uh, the uh, story did not come out as well as I would have hoped. So I wait for a day, I hear nothing back. I give the police a call, I hear nothing back. I finally uh, write some emails to various people in the, the Tulsa Police Department and I say, hey, um, what's the deal with this uh, stolen bicycle? I'd really like to know where it is, what I could do with it. And they said, oh, we weren't able to recover it. It doesn't look likely at this point. Now, this is admittedly a few days later, 
and they tell me to just stay calm and we'll hopefully find it and they'll let me know if they ever do pick it up. Okay, fine. Weeks have now gone by. I've submitted an insurance request and uh, that's gonna be the end of the story unless somehow it turns up somewhere along the line. Now I know the likelihood is I'm not gonna find the bike again. I know it's a loud day out here, but I have to walk these trails that I rode so frequently with it, just in case, just in case I catch a glimpse of it. I don't feel like I think I should feel, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I, I don't feel sad, I don't feel angry, I feel mostly disappointed in myself for not locking the bike. Such a simple thing could have prevented this whole thing. And you know, for the first bicycle that I bought myself, with my own money, as an adult, I feel like I should have known better. I spent a long time researching that bike, trying to figure out if that was the right one. When it was in stock locally, it was just like the perfect thing. So perhaps there's some shock, but it's been a while. I don't feel like it's a, a new experience at this point. And yet, I don't know. I hope I see it again one day. In the meantime, in addition to the insurance payment, the church where I work <laughs> offered a little bit of a bonus. And so I think I'm gonna go ahead and get a new bike because I really miss it. I miss riding the trails. I miss commuting to work on my bicycle. <laughs> I miss prepping for the next long distance adventure, whatever that's going to be. And you know, I'm sad that I've lost so much of the, the chance to do some of these adventures that I could otherwise have had. On the other hand, there's a part of me that knows that the, the person who took it is experiencing homelessness. Their life is not easy. And so a part of me feels grateful that I can help somebody, though I wish I could have done so through asking and seeing if I could support them in another way. I'm not exactly a stranger to helping people hard on their luck. Whether it's through conversation, whether it's through food, whether it's through other means. It's one of the uh, perks of being a pastor, I guess, is that I get to help people. In this case, you know, I am blessed with the opportunity that many people aren't. The opportunity to replace something that was stolen. And I know that. I still don't want it to happen again. You know, you shall not steal is one of those things that we're told. <laughs> How would you feel? How have you felt when your bike was stolen? What steps have you taken to prevent it happening again? <laughs>